What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Coker here, aka Josh Miss Prime. You know what it is. Coming back at you from Polymathics, the channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man and or woman. In this episode, we're going to discuss reader magnets. Specifically, I'd like to sit down and talk to you about science fiction and fantasy reader magnets. The main reason is because not so long ago, I published a science fiction space opera reader magnet, and I'm using it to build a new mailing list for my flagship series, Realm Wars. And so I want to, I want to, I want to very quickly show you an overview of the strategy that I used. But before I do, there are a few caveats that I have to put out here, and also just some things to give you context. One, while we're talking, I have to consider my words carefully because I'm speaking to some people who maybe you just stumbled across this. This is the first time you've ever heard about a reader magnet, and you have no idea what that is. Some of you are maybe intermediate. You have an idea of what a reader magnet is, but you've never come across one that's specifically for science fiction and fantasy. Or, or three, you are, you are an experienced author. Maybe you've done reader magnets before, or maybe you've published books but never done reader magnets before. So I'm kind of dealing with various people here. So I want to be very specific. This, excuse me, this will be beneficial to everybody. But it was specifically made for people who are writing in mainly fiction, but particularly science fiction, space opera. This would definitely work for fantasy and other fiction genres. However, you have to take into account your the nuances that, that would take place in something that's more genre specific. And then... <clears throat> It also would be beneficial for people who are writing uh, nonfiction books as well. And for those of you that don't know, I have various books written in nonfiction, um, mythological storytelling, how to write even better characters, um, the iconic hero, etc., etc. I have various other books that are nonfiction, that this strategy would work, but I would tweak it, okay? So just keep in mind here, right? This is a this is a strategy specifically for people who are starting out with science fiction and preferably launching a series, okay? That doesn't mean that it wouldn't work for a one-off book. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't work for, again, fantasy or romance or thrillers. You just have to think in your mind, how does my audience differ from Josh's? And then, the only other uh, caveat that I would give, or uh, here's some context, right? You might say, Josh, w what caused you to make this? And I'll do a whole other video that's, that's longer about why, but the main reason is that over the last two or three years, I've been looking at like how to best launch a series. And it's become very apparent, very clear to me that those who do well in self-publishing, they build a mailing list. And the best way to build a mailing list is by utilizing a reader magnet. So, then I went down this rabbit hole of what's the best reader magnet for science fiction and fantasy? How, how do you d distribute it? How, what, what are the best strategies and things like that? And what I found was there was a ton of great information. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a whole other video on reference materials that you can use. But suffice to say that the majority of the information comes from either 20 books to 50K or um, Six Figure Author pod Podcast. There are others. Um, Chris Fox, Nick Stevenson, uh, Newsletter Ninja. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. But here's the problem. None of them were condensed down into something that was specifically for science fiction space opera. And so I said to myself, okay, well, since I'm going through this process already and I'm getting all these materials for myself, I might as well create this video to help anybody else 
in the future who's going through this process, maybe make it a little bit easier for them, okay? And then the last thing, I promise this is the last thing we'll get into it, is <clears throat> this is a strategy. And in later videos, I'm gonna discuss different strategies. This is what I consider the, the, the most all-encompassing strategy. However, if you're someone that's already published your books, this may not be best for you. You may wanna take a different strategy. So there are ways that I'll try to touch on while we talk here that I would tweak it if I had already published the books that I wanted to build the, the list for. However, uh, again, I'm assuming that you have not published your series yet and you're going to do book one. I'm also assuming <coughs> that you're in the same boat as me and that you are building this list for the first time for a new genre or series or, or group of readers. So with that being said, let's just jump right in here. Okay, what you're looking at is book one in, in my prequel series called The Balance of Power Saga. And this is a prequel series to my main series of Realm Wars. And one thing that you'll note is that you're looking at it on Amazon. And I picked this up. I picked, I picked up this piece of the strategy from Nick Stevens. Or maybe it's Nick Stevenson. But uh, I'm not going to go into super depth about this. Again, this is just an overview. But because Amazon has the lion's share of the digital reading market right now for ebooks. It just makes sense to put your book here on Amazon. Now, the benefit uh, of doing of doing this strategy is that you can also have it on other books. You can have this book be wide because you're going to be selling it, selling it for free. You're going to be giving it away for free. And again, we'll go into the mindset of reader magnets and why you should have one and why you would make it free, but let's just put it this way. If you were meeting someone for the first time and you wanted to get to know them, um, and you, 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 would not, you would not invite them over to your house for a three hour long dinner. What you would do if you just met someone is you would introduce yourself, have a short conversation, and then exchange information. And then over time, have a couple more instances like that where you have short hangouts. And then if you guys click, then you go and you develop a more long-term relationship. That's the whole idea behind reader magnets. So <clears throat> what, we're, what you're going to do is once you write your reader magnet, and don't worry, I will discuss like what, what the reader magnet should be about. Then what you'll do is the, the number one priority is to put it on Amazon. <clears throat> After that, <coughs> you can go to draft a digital and you can post it to pretty much all of the other um, platforms. And then what you would do is you would send it uh, to free. That way you could then email Amazon and say, Hey, I would like, my book on Amazon to be free. Once that's set up, that's the main setup. Then what you're going to have is you're going to have traffic flowing mainly through Amazon, but also through through all those other platforms. You can also publish on Google and, and things of that nature. But uh, you're going to focus on Amazon because Amazon is, again, it's going to have tons of readers coming every day looking for new books to read, looking for new authors to read. And specifically looking for free stuff to read. <clears throat> so this is going to be your quote unquote silver bullet to get traffic going to your book. So that's number one. Now I'm going to pause here real quick and just briefly go over what kind of book do you write. Uh, preferably, again, I'm assuming that you're writing, that this is to preempt for a series that you're gonna write that's going to be science fiction. And if that's the case, <clears throat> I would write 
a prequel novella, uh, and possibly more than that. Um, if you can, and this is where the extra steps come in and kind of the bonus steps, is if you can write, say, two or three small, short, not short stories, but uh, like novella length stories, that's really going to allow you to <clears throat> utilize this to the best of its abilities. It's not a requirement. All you need is one, like you see here. <laughs> and what you would do, so just for example, a person can click on this, start reading the preview, and then if they're interested, that's kind of like when you're when you're at a function and you meet someone for the first time and you strike up a conversation. By the end of this preview, it's kind of like by the end of the elevator pitch, by the end of the two or three minute conversation, then you both get to decide, hmm, do I want to continue this conversation or is this not for me? If they say, hey, I want to continue this conversation, <clears throat> well then they can now, at no cost of their own, they can go and purchase it for free. So, <clears throat> after they do that, then they can read the entire book. And at the end of the book, what I'm going to show you right now, let's see. Now, I'll get to this in a second. So here, what, what, what you're looking at here is a digital version of the story, right? This is actually on BookFunnel, and I'll talk about that. Um, at the end of the book, you will direct them to one of two things. In, in my strategy, the one that you're looking at right now, it goes to book two in the prequel series. Okay, This is another novella that they can click on this link and then it takes them to this, <clears throat> this uh, reader magnet right here. This is reader magnet two. Now, you might be asking, why are you, why are you writing so many books and, and why are you doing all of this, Josh? Again, I'll go into a lot of the theory later, but the main reason is here, you're just getting traffic in the other platforms as well, but here's where you're going to get the most traffic. That traffic is going to all then funnel into the end of the book. And at the end of the book, you are sending them to <coughs> this page so that they will click on this button and give you their information, their email. And <clears throat> that, is the, that is the first true transaction, okay? And it's probably the most beneficial transaction for you as an author at this stage in your career. Because if you wanna build your mailing list <clears throat> and you wanna create a customer base that you can start messaging and keeping up to date on everything that's going on, build a fan base, get beta readers, get reviewers, all these things, then you have to have some way to communicate with them. Going back to the example where you meet someone new, this is the stage where you say, hey, are you on Instagram? Or hey, can I get your phone number? This is a way that you can stay in contact with the person and give them updates. So that's why this is so important. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to stop here and pause because I'm sure a lot of you guys are already geeking out and wondering like, okay, hold on. How long are these novella books? And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ballpark them. I don't remember specifically, but I believe this one is around... Actually, I believe both of these two are actually around 20,000 words each. And I know these two right here. I think they're both 20,000 words each. Now, I know you guys are saying, so wait a minute, you wrote 40,000 words just for this reader magnet strategy? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I wrote more than that. I think I wrote about 60,000 words, and I'll get to that in a minute. But what I'm telling you is it's not required. You could make this 10,000 words, and initially that was my goal, was to make this 10,000 words. However, I'm one of those writers who... I can't stop. <clears throat> um, ideally, they would be somewhere between 10 to 20,000 words, each one. 
Um, I wouldn't go any less than 10, and I wouldn't go any more than 20. And the reason is, again, it's the whole idea that you're just getting to know someone. So you want to give them little samples of, <clears throat> excuse me, again, my, my throat is kind of messed up from allergies. You want to give them examples of your writing. And you want to give them an opportunity to read a full story <clears throat> and have like a beginning, middle, and end where they can see, okay, how does this guy or, or gal write? How do they, how do they set up chapters? And, and they're not thinking of, a, of it like that. If they're a reader, they're like, how is this fun? Is this fast paced? Do I feel like I'm living vicariously through this character? That, that's all craft stuff. But the point is, they're gauging that, okay? For science fiction readers, your audience is going to want something completely different from your writing style than a thriller reader than a romance reader and so that's where you really have to know your genre and your audience and hopefully <clears throat> you've done some research in the past on what other authors are doing in in your genre okay so so stick to about 10 or 20,000 words and in later videos, I'll discuss that much more in depth about what, what types they can be and how long and all this other stuff. But there you go. Um, it's pretty easy to do prequels um, because then it can lead into your main book. You can choose characters that are, are you, you want characters that are germane to your story, semi-interesting, but not necessarily the main character in the, in the main story. So it kind of, because in that sense too, it kind of fleshes things out. A really good example that I heard from Joe Lalo on the Six Figure Author podcast was um, doing like a bounty hunter who has different... Uh, like a Boba Fett type of person or a Jango Fett type of person who, who has <clears throat> various um, marks that he has to go out and get. Or you could do, uh, this is actually kind of like in thrillers, you could do a investigator who's investigating crimes and then um, have, have it be the crime that led up to the main story or whatever the case may be. So... <clears throat> now, now you guys might be saying, okay, Josh, but how were you able to create this landing page? I don't, I don't have a website like you do. I don't, I don't have any of this stuff. How can I possibly create these things? Okay. That's where book funnel comes in. And actually, um, so I'm going to do a big shout out here to book funnel. Let me show you. Okay. So this is book funnel. And what you'll do is you will uh, sign up. You, you want to sign up as an author. And then it will allow you to create these landing pages with your reader magnet. It will let you upload it. It's very similar to uh, creating a book on Amazon. Okay. <clears throat> and then what you do is now you have the link to the landing page. And... Um, again, this can be sent out anywhere. You can put it on Facebook. You can put it on any social media. Um, let's see here. If I go to Instagram, uh, that's my personal. Let me switch to, I just started a author Instagram. And if you go to my author Instagram and you click here, you can put it on Linktree and see here you'll see, download your free copy of The Hidden Power. And it takes them right there. So <clears throat> that's a really good way to do it. And you can put all kinds of things in your Linktree. But um, okay, so now, now let's say they came through Amazon, they read the book. At the end of the book, they clicked on this link 
and then it took them to this book. They clicked on that link, they gave you their information, now what happens? <coughs> well, now what I'm gonna do, and I'm sorry I, I didn't bring up the email, but I'm gonna send them an email. They're now, they've now been added to my email list, my newsletter. So now what I'm gonna do is send them a series of onboarding emails. And what onboarding is meant to do is to familiarize them with yourself, make sure they got the stuff, and also kind of qualify them as a reader. And here's what I mean. Uh, what you'll find as you start to build your newsletter is that not all people who sign up to get these things are, are qualified to be on your newsletter. Some of them aren't good about opening newsletters. Some of them... Um, maybe have <clears throat> email platforms that um, that that like kind of block st uh, stuff that uh, that isn't from like an individual, so to speak. But also, some of them are just there to get free stuff, and they're not necessarily wanting to dive deeper into your world or get emails. And some people just also don't like emails, right? So. Um, you, you want to be filtering those people out, actually. And I know that sounds crazy because the whole point is to build an email list. But you, you want to think about it like this. If you were going to invite people to your house or to a party where you spent lots of money to go to Ibiza or something and be on a yacht or I don't know, uh, some crazy sh shit like that, right? You don't want to just invite people who are going to complain all the time or who won't show up to, to use their plane ticket. You want the people who are constantly engaged with you, constantly hanging out, people who you would feel comfortable going into your house. The same thing with your newsletter. You want the people who are constantly engaged, constantly reading your stuff and you know essentially clicking on links and things like that. Now, <clears throat> some of you who are hardcore writers, but don't have the business slash marketing aspect uh, developed yet, you're probably thinking, this sounds really, um, you know, businessy and, and it, it's taking away from the heart of the book and, and, and writing and, and wrong. Stop right there. Time out. What you're doing is you're romanticizing what writing you think writing should be in your mind versus what it is in reality. All of the top level indie publishers, and, it, and again, I'm sure there are outliers. I'm not going to say that there aren't outliers, but I'm saying the majority, the vast majority, the 99% of them are writing books, writing reader magnets, and using book funnels, not necessarily book funnel, but book funnels to build their mailing list. And <clears throat> if you think that you're going to, that you're so special that you don't have to follow that process because you want to romanticize writing and not consider the business aspect of it, then what is going to happen is you will not be as successful and your book will not reach as many people as it should. And if at the at the core of storytelling is this idea that the story is going to be beneficial to those that you share it with and therefore you want to share it with as many people that it might benefit as possible and you cannot do that if you're not willing to go through these steps and in my mind people who try to go down that route of romanticizing uh writing and i was there once by the way what they're really trying to do, it's really just laziness. What they're really trying to do is avoid the hard work that they have to do. You see, because they thought that in order to be a successful writer, all they had to do was write words on a sheet of paper. They didn't realize that this is a vocation where you have to test yourself to the limits and push yourself to constantly grow and, and go outside of your comfort zone. And that those who truly succeed in this arena, that's what they're doing every year. They're, they're developing, you know, if you look at people like 
I, I know this is a tangent, but it's very important to the mindset of this. <coughs> if you look at people like Joanna Penn, her readership and the way that she, uh, the the way that she works now compared to five, ten years ago is completely different, and it's because she's constantly and continually grown and developed. And there are countless other people that I can name. You need to be on that list too. So, all right. So now that I've gone off that tangent and beat, beaten the dead horse, now let's go. What happens now? I've sent them an email. And in that email, I say, hey, did you get the two books? Did you get this book? And did you get that book? And in the email, it looks pretty much like this. And I just... Basically, all I do is I introduce myself. I say, like, hey, I'm Josh Coker. Uh, I was born in the 80s, read comics, played video games, Star Wars, all that stuff. And then I'm like, if you didn't get your books, here's a link. It's this link right here where you can go and download them. And you want to do that. Now, we'll go over the whole welcoming sequence and onboarding sequence. But you want to make sure... Even if they did download the book, sometimes they downloaded it on another computer or they forgot that they had it and they put it into this pile of books that gets forgotten. You want to remind them about these two books because again, the goal is for them to read them and hopefully your writing was good enough to hook them into reading more. So after they get these two books and they read through the second one, then they're going to get a link to this, which is the third book in the series. Now, you 100% do not have to have a third book in the series. For me, <clears throat> there were lots of reasons that I did it. Part of it was just I, I couldn't stop writing the story. So, um, this, this could be, okay... Let's say that you didn't write a third one. You just had those two. Well, then the link at the end of the second book could go to another book on Amazon, which is your main book, your main series book, book one in your, in your title. So for me, that would be Realm Wars, which <clears throat> I don't have up right now, but I think you get the hint. It goes this book, then this book, then the main book. The main book would be whatever your book one is, okay? And that's what starts funneling people into your main book. And <clears throat> the benefit is, now that they're on your list, you can continue to market to them even after they've gone to the first book. And, and there's several different way, ways and reasons why you would do that. Um, I'm not going to go through them right now because that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the end, right? You, you have a, a one to three book funnel that ends in them going to whatever your main book is. Maybe it's not on Amazon. Maybe it's on, on some other Barnes & Noble or Google Play, Google Books. That part doesn't matter as much as you're using this strategy to build a newsletter. And then, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, so now let's talk about the last, oh, actually, oop, right here. So, <coughs> excuse me. What you see right here is, um, here's three examples of what you could do for reader magnets after your first book okay now some of these could make uh, good reader magnets for other stuff but um, you can do a top 10 list and and as you can see here right like here let me let me see if I can blow this up a little bit so I've given you the length of words the price and also kind of a use Example, um, what type of fans it would be best for, where it would be best to be used, and what, what so this is another thing, right, that, that I had to find out after 
watching and reading copious amounts of information is that um, you can use reader magnets to track the progress of the people who are reading your books. And therefore, you have an idea of what the reading clip is. And if you know what the reading clip is, it helps you... <clears throat> It helps you get an idea of the ideal times to release, the ideal uh, cycles to release. So here, here's three right now, right? You have your top 10 list from, uh, from one of the characters in your book, and it could be top 10 places to visit in the galaxy. It could be top 10 foods to eat in the galaxy, top 10 movies to see. It could be whatever you want. And all this is going to do is build up your um your your readership because after the onboarding sequence you can take those people who who do open all of your emails who are interested in your world and you can put them into um what i like to call a world building sequence where now you're you're telling them all about the the fantastical world that you're building that they're going to be reading in and this is a way to create super fans, to get beta readers, to get reviewers, and things like that. And um, I'll go back to this in a second, but one thing that I failed to mention is aside from using Book Funnel, aside from using Book Funnel, you can also use Story Origin. Story Origin. Although I don't use them for um, for creating the book funnel landing pages, they have a very similar process that you can use. Now I do use <coughs> book funnel for um, what's the word? I'm sorry. I do use Story Origin for um, for getting reviews. So. So, and, and there are actually lots of other things. I just got Story Origin, so I haven't been able to use it to its fullest uh, potential. So let's go back to this. So you got top 10 list from one of your characters. <coughs> a po a poetry or diary entry from a character. I actually, so in my world, there's a whole mythology Think of like Game of Thrones, how they had the gods, the old gods and the new gods. There's a whole mythology, and one of the one of the aspects of the mythology mythology is that there's the the Psalms of the Phantasium, and those Psalms are basically poems or songs that are about the world, like the history, the mythology of that world. So um, you can. This is a great place because I think some of us who are writers too, even though we write fiction, we also tend to also write like poetry and things like that. This is a great place to showcase work that you probably wouldn't have sold anyways. And then the last <clears throat> kind of freebie I'll give you here is a how-to guide from a character. How to... Uh, fix an automaton. That would probably be one that my character in my in my main character in my world uh, would write or could write. How to drive a hovercraft, something like that. And it now, as you can see, these don't have to be that long. These are not ten to twenty thousand word stories. Okay. So that is a quick overview. I'm not quite sure where we are on time. But the last thing that I will say, oh, looks like 30, 30 minutes. <coughs> the last thing that I'll say is that um, if you would like to see all the examples of, um, of reader magnets that I came up with. And there probably are more, but this is just a good one to get you started, including the ones that I've shown um, in a format like this, then all you gotta do, let me see if I can find it. You can, I will put this link that you can see right there down in the description below and you can get the list. And then, um, <clears throat> yes, you will be going on a mailing list that I have for nonfiction stuff, but 
um, that that's only that's going to be like uh, emailed every once in a while. And it's going to be strictly for materials like this, things that might help science fiction readers or writers. So if this is something you're interested in, go ahead and check it out. As you can see, it's going to have, how many did I put in here? I don't know. I think it's like 15 or 20. So I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, a bunch. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, until next time. This has been Josh Coker, a.k.a. Josh Miss Prime. We'll talk about all these things in depth in other videos. but uh, And I can, I'll walk you through how to set all this stuff up. But until next time, take it easy.